West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy with Chef Justice Putnam. Netrootsradio.com Des photos de bord de mer Dans mon jardin d'hiver Je voudrais de la lumière Comme en Nouvelle-Angleterre Je veux changer d'atmosphère Dans mon jardin d'hiver Americans face a rising movement against democracy. President Biden is warning about semi-fascism here in the U.S. The news out of Italy is a party founded by allies of its actual fascist dictator. But you know, Mussolini just won a huge election, putting Giorgia Maloney on track to lead Italy, a right-wing candidate who has ties to convicted Trump aide Steve Bannon. Reports there you heard emphasize that these results, brand new, show rising and mainstream Italian support for a right-wing party. Maloney is on track to be the next prime minister. And her party has ties to the infamous Mussolini. She campaigned with his granddaughter, you see there in the center, Maloney on the left. Their modern rallies blatantly feature this tricolor flame, which is viewed as a symbol of the hard right authoritarian movement in Italy today. This is news tonight because it goes way beyond symbols. Italian leaders have tried to turn the page from Mussolini, Hitler's staunch ally. That was the old playbook. But Maloney actually rose through the ranks as a young activist backing the controversial effort to actually rehab the dictator Mussolini's legacy. Je crois que, que Mussolini, c'était un, un bon politicien. C'est-à-dire que, que tout ce qu'il a fait, il a fait pour lui. Everything he did, he did for Italy. Let's be clear, whether you think we should have to say this or not out loud in life or on the news, Mussolini was a brutal dictator and Hitler ally who founded the National Fascist Party, who ran a police state, who helped spread the seed of fascism across Western Europe going into the horrors of World War II. So the claim you just heard from the younger version of this candidate, that was too much even for this general election. Maloney walked back those statements and now says, quote, fascism is history. So she's pitching a twist on right-wing authoritarian politics, but she's still clear about her hard right views, attacking immigrants, minorities, democratic norms. She's pushed the racist, anti-Semitic great replacement theory that we've reported on before. It warns that immigrants are taking over the sort of, quote, rightful white majority. That conspiracy theory first came from a French intellectual, and it's found an airing everywhere from right-wing politics in Europe to Tucker Carlson right here in America. It's also been cited by multiple mass murderers trying to start racial civil wars. Now, Maloney hurled it as an attack on liberals in her own country's government, claiming they were funding invasions to replace Italians with immigrants. Now, this is really a somewhat coded version of the hate that has torn apart Europe before, which uses propaganda to whip up hate and discrimination against minorities while claiming those minorities are so powerful they must be stopped or worse. So given that we're talking about this Mussolini allied party, remember he said, quote, 
the entire white race could be submerged by other races of color that multiply. And while there can be valid debates over immigration policy, advocating, say, a lower migration levels is not the definition of fascism, Maloney has gone way beyond all that. She opposes democratic values like religious freedom. She talks about banning mosques or being allowed to even communicate in a foreign language in Italy. These are the kind of attacks on religion and freedom that did correlate with that march Europe made towards its darkest days in World War II. Siamo a Marciano, in Umbria, in un sito dove dovrebbe nascere un'altra moschea, per dire no, no alla nascita di nuove moschee. Vogliamo sapere chi predica nelle moschee, vogliamo che quelle prediche vengano fatte in italiano perché qui siamo in Italia. When the people with power say no to a house of worship, you have to remember it does not matter which house of worship. Could be synagogues, could be mosques, could be churches. But they want to use their power there in Italy and other places to control your freedom, your mind, your human rights. And we know where that leads. This is not a drill. Now, this kind of hate ebbs and flows in history. But it is generally one of the enduring tools of authoritarians and fascists. So yes, Jews in one era, Muslims in another, Catholics in another. And in one region, it could be targeting immigrants at that very border. In another, just any racial minorities. They could be several countries away, but they are the specter that animates the hate, which justifies the end of democracy. History shows a stark difference between patriotism and nationalism and how nationalists will fuse that hate of the other with this extreme pride in their group, which could be country, or a version of the leadership of that country, or of course, race, which is a social construction. You have to remember how they treated other minority groups and Jews as a different race. That race just becomes a system of oppression designed to oppress and suppress and hurt people. Mussolini gave thunderous addresses in Italian, whipping up these very emotions. You have to keep that in mind when you hear politicians today trying to rehab what he did and st what he stood for. And before the Axis and his alliance with Germany, before they were fighting the U.S., Mussolini tried his hand at telling Americans, cannot make it up. Mussolini telling Americans they could make America great. Tutto un fatto nuovo nella storia dell'umanità. Il popolo italiano che è il protagonista della sua storia. I am very glad to be able to express my friendly feelings towards the American nation. E mai, come oggi, abbiamo sentito che il destino è nelle nostre mani e che questo sarà il capolavoro della nostra invincibile volontà. I greet the wonderful energy of the American peace and I see and recognize among you sons of your land as well as ours, my fellow citizens who are working to make America great. He was talking about making America great in 1927. He went on to fight America as part of the Axis. MAGA leaders like Steve Bannon also have some fingerprints in this right-wing surge in Europe. He's been paying attention. Bannon sees that neo-branding as a kind of Trojan horse for the agenda that he clearly knows comes out of the fascist groups. We should note he also later tried to walk back some of that blunt theorem as recorded there. The neo-fascists have now gotten further in Italy than other countries, but this is not just a story about Italy tonight. It is a story about what you see on your screen, the rising mainlining support for anti-democracy and sometimes hateful movements in countries from Italy to America to France. Consider that a hard right group founded by neo-Nazis and skinheads became the largest party in Sweden's likely governing coalition just last week. Or that far right leader we just had on the screen, Le Pen, reaching the final round of the French president elections this year for a second consecutive time as the Times reports, and America watches this Trump-era Republican Party openly embrace authoritarian tactics, and now, really, many of its leaders defending what was documented as a failed coup. As the New York Times sums it up, 
More than 70 years after Nazis and fascists nearly destroyed Europe, formerly taboo parties with Nazi or fascist heritages that were long marginalized have elbowed their way into the mainstream. A page of European history seems to be turning. It is Italy, though, the birthplace of fascism with the first Italian leader whose party can trace its roots back to the wreckage of Italian fascism. It's all out in the open. If you've been busy and haven't closely followed what's happening in Europe, it's time to pay attention. The fascism that begins in Europe does not tend to just stay there. And as we showed you, other people are following this. The Bannons of the world have been on this. They know her name. They're working with her. They're talking to her. And if you consider the facts we just went through, a fascist link party with a leader who defended Mussolini and wants to ban religion and embrace replacement conspiracy theories against Jews and minorities, is her electoral progress, this winning race, a good thing? Well, Senator Cruz has been following it. He says the win is spectacular. Other Republicans here offering their congratulations. That is chilling. If you don't want to be seen as a semi-fascist, if you complain when Biden calls you that, then don't tout neo-fascists. Enough with the caveats when we're talking about fascism. And if you don't want to relive the worst parts of the modern era, you got to learn history and follow today's events, which they become history. And the point here is not left or right. It's sometimes described as a conservative concern that governments can pose more harm than good. Those fascists and axes governments certainly showed that, though they were right-wing governments. And sometimes described as a liberal concern that all people must have inalienable human rights, that the march of progress and civilization and improving our states and governments is actually finally trying to come through on that. Well, that means rights for not just the people in charge or people who look a certain way. And this runs deeper than any ideology. This is about power and tyranny, about that great grand question that we don't always get to the heart of it when we talk here on these news nights. But it was the question in World War II, and it's the question cropping up here. Can we, as societies in this modern world with so many ways that people can hurt each other and so many ways the government can rule, can we live together or will we ultimately destroy ourselves? It's well known that the forces against democracy sometimes build power by winning elections and then trying to cancel the next ones. That's happened in Europe before. Putin won his first election, then there weren't any more fair ones. It can happen again there. As Sinclair Lewis warned Americans in 1935, it can also happen here. So are we going to be aware of these facts and what are we going to do about them? It is Wednesday, the 28th of September of 2022. And you are in West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. I am your chef de cuisine, Justice Putnam. Gunner the English Bulldog is our snoozing sous chef. And our daily special is Smothered Benedict Wednesdays. Will no one rid us of these meddlesome priests, wherever they may be? Iran, maybe even Tulsa. Gotta get rid of them. Yep. They are meddlesome. And someone should do something about it. So, uh, you know, I guess uh, I guess the code words have been coded. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's all in jest, isn't it? Because uh, we move in our own mysterious ways, which tends to be, <laughs> I don't know, non, as non-confrontational as possible. And the next thing we know... Fascism is goose stepping across the Italian boot. Okay. They say it comes in cycles. Well, I guess we're in one, aren't we? I guess we are. I got to tell you, though, as a kid growing up, you know, I always imagined that when it would happen, because it was sure to happen, I, I had imagined it would have 
occurred when I was much younger and you too. And we could do something about it physically. You know, like run. <laughs> now we're stuck. Oh, my God. We're like the old people, like, pushing the cart. And we're, like, you know, uh, limping along, pushing the cart. Okay. Yeah, I kind of had hoped that uh, the timing would be different. But you never know. You just never know when it's going to happen. And I feel so sorry for the last remaining greatest generation Holocaust survivors seeing this happen again. Yeah, we have a few Holocaust survivors left. They're not all gone yet. The other thing I did imagine as I got a little bit older is that I, I used to think, wouldn't it be weird if if like I became the Edmund G. Robinson character in Silent Green, you know, the book? <laughs> the guy who had all the library and basically a historian. And he would help uh, the Burt Lancaster cop out and try to figure out his investigative job. And I thought, wouldn't that be weird if I became a book? One of the last few people. Oh, I guess they were all librarians. Maybe that's what it was. Because they had a poker party or something with his uh, book friends. And uh, I believe, yeah, they may have just all been librarians. But regardless, I just had imagined that, wouldn't that be weird that uh, you're the repository of the last libraries literally in the world. And all that happened like even 20 years before or even less. But I think it was about 20 years and everybody had forgotten it or were very unclear about what happened. But uh, the Edward G. Robinson guy as the book, meaning, I don't know, the, uh, the researcher, they call him the book. And then uh, he got tired and he said, yeah, take me to, uh, you know, the institution over there and uh, put me in front of a really happy screen of, I, I don't know, I got to tell you, I always wondered how Wyndham Hill got their ideas about making the music that they would make. And uh, it was pretty much incorporated in Soylent Green. So... That's why I pretty much had an aversion to Wyndham Hill. <laughs> you playing Wyndham Hill and you're going to start digging into my teeth? No way. No way. Put on some Metallica or something. Not Wyndham Hill. <laughs> I'm not going to another another place. And then everybody starts screaming, Soylent Green is people. Yeah, well. Okay. I really believe that was a metaphor for the times. And even now. Yes, even more so. So, Georgia Maloney. Mm-hmm. I love how they call her and Bannon allies. Now, I gotta, once again, remind people. Maloney's neo-fascist Mussolini party thought that Bannon was too fascist for them. But I must admit, it wasn't just being too fascist for even the fascists who created fascism. It is the fact that he was like a grifter. Not like a grifter. He is a grifter. And apparently, maybe he skirted out on the tribute he was supposed to pay. Or maybe he paid tribute to, I don't know, maybe somebody in Naples. Instead of down there in Sicily somewhere. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just conjecturing here. But they're all crooks and uh, organized as the, at that. So they're not just crooks. They're organized. And don't both sides this BS either. Man, we get rid of the most innocuous. Uh, or we get rid of our great people over the most innocuous. Okay? So uh, we can't hold the neo-Nazi maggot party members to account for any individual infraction that they're committing at this very moment. But we have to hold our own to account for something they did oh, since some instances 30 years before they ever, ever became unelected. For, I don't know, being on a USO tour. You were doing hijinks on a USO tour. That's so unbecoming. You can't be a senator anymore. You're a, uh, I don't know. They were basically saying that Franken was a creep. Okay. 
being a creep. He's a creep. Just look at him. He's a creep. All right. Where are we going with this? I'll tell you where we're going. We're going right into what we have in store for you today. Yes, we can only meander so much. We have work to do here at the salon we call West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. Well, yeah, Georgia Maloney at the top. Let's not forget, she and Bannon, they're pretty tight. Pretty tight on pushing that racist, anti-Semitic great replacement theory, aren't they? <laughs> Attacking immigrants, minorities, democratic norms. Who needs that? All right. You know what they say? I don't know who began this, but it, it's pertinent. Okay. A lot of times, and especially in America, but I think that most uh, any people anywhere in the world, they'd much rather go with strong and wrong than, um, I don't know, weak and correct. I, that's not quite how the quote goes, but, you know, weak and correct. So, strong and wrong. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You can be strong and right, too. In a benevolent way. Well, I'm just saying. Hippies get kicked. Punks kick back. You have a choice. What's on the rest of the menu? The Alameda County Sheriff's Office stripped 47 deputies of their firearms and California peace officer duties after an internal audit revealed they failed their psychological evaluations. I don't know. Maybe they didn't ta tell the uh, evaluator that they had a great habit of killing dogs when they were growing up. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe worse. American interstates are going to get a lot friendlier to EVs, thankfully. And millions of Americans will save on Medicare fees next year. Thank you, Joe. After the break, we move to the chef's table where the British pound plunged to a record low against the soaring dollar, prompting defeatist memes about the world's sixth largest economy. You, you know who is number five? Yeah, California. Them. And European leaders believe the dual explosions that damaged the Nord Stream gas pipeline were deliberate. And some officials blame the Kremlin for the sabotage. Some. Not not the guy overnight that is on that true social platform. Not him. All that and more on West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. Bon Appetit. Radio.com to the right of the page is the chat room link, and the chat room is monitored by the Kelly Lincoln. Thank you, Kelly. I hear that she's having some internet issues, possibly because of storm activity and revenue. So let's hope that Kelly uh, is okay and let's take care of her, okay? Thank you. If you would like to then look across the page from the chat room link, you'll notice our Patreon page. And if you could become a recurring Patreon of Netroots Radio, it helps us pay our bills. It doesn't put any money in our wallets because we're pulling money out of our wallets to pay these bills. And if you could help us, that would be great. If you could afford an espresso-type coffee drink, and if you could send those funds our way once a month, it does help us pay those bills. And as you know, with inflation... It's just another excuse to price gouge. Now, I'm not accusing, you know, our providers of doing anything like that. But costs go up across the board, don't they? Yes, they do. So thank you for being generous and allowing us to, well, 
fulfill our civic duty. And what is that civic duty? Oh, my God. Being a powerhouse of resistance against this dark fascist takeover of <clears throat> American democracy and democracy around the world. We have to stop it. Even though I'm choking up right now, I've got to clear those lungs. If you would like to follow the show on Twitter, you can do that by going to at Netroots Radio. Tom takes care of that and a hell of a lot more. Thanks, Tom. Follow me on Twitter at Justice Putnam. I post those show notes and links, diaries on Daily Co's 10 minutes before showtime. And that's where the real reportage can be found. So uh, you, you can find uh, the show notes and links at uh, on my Twitter feed. That's one way to find them. So there. You can follow the show on Twitter at Cookbook West and pick up podcasts by way of Spreaker, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeart, YouTube, iTunes, etc., etc., etc. And, of course, you can also pick up the deep archive of the Netroots Radio Library. 11 plus years of shows on Netroots Radio at the Internet Archive at archive.org. That's right. Even SciTech. That's in there. That's in the deep archive. Check it out. Okay, let's now tuck into this first offering here in the Bistro Cafe part of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy, because we also have the chef's table, you know. This uh, first offering is by Melissa Hernandez, who is a staff writer at the L.A. Times. The Alameda County Sheriff's Office has stripped 47 deputies of their firearms and peace officer duties after an internal audit revealed they were never qualified to be hired because they failed their psychological evaluations, authorities said. In a letter sent to nearly four dozen deputies obtained by the Times, the department details that it initiated an internal audit of background checks and psychological, psychological exams for those hired since January of 2016. What, why is that like a familiar date? Who came into office on the federal level at that point, and how did the mindset of America change so drastically? I don't know if it changed so drastically, but they got to do everything that they've been wanting to do for a very long time. Back to the real reportage. As a result of this audit, it was learned that the result of your psychological evaluation was listed by the psychologist who performed your evaluation as D, not suited, the letter reads. A great deal of research and current advice from both police officer standards training, known as POST, and county council has confirmed that any candidate who is evaluated as D, not suited, cannot serve as a peace officer in the state of California. The sheriff's office said it had been operating under information provided by or provided a number of years ago by the California Commission on Police Officer Standards and Training, or POST, that candidates who receive a D, not suited evaluation could still be hired. But officials said they since have learned otherwise. Okay. It says D. Not suited. But for some reason, for some reason, the sheriff's office in Alameda thought that meant, oh, we can still hire him. All right. We got faulty advice, said Lieutenant Ray Kelly, a spokesperson for the sheriff's office. We got that information from a commission post rep who told us that we could hire D scores and that they should be suitable based on the totality of the background check. Kelly said deputies required retest would now need a C minus grade to pass the to pass their evaluations and be returned to duty. But Megan Polis, a spokesperson for Post, told the San Francisco Chronicle that the grading guidelines for Post-certified psychological exams have never changed. 
She said letter grades such as C's or D's are not used to to determine results of post-certified psychological evaluations. Kelly said a team of post officials arrived at the department's backgrounds unit office on Tuesday yesterday to review files and discuss the results of the audit with Alameda County Sheriff's officials. The majority of the deputies notified of the audit were hired be were hired between 2019 and 2022, Kelly said, as departments in the Bay Area struggle to recruit new law enforcement officers. So we'll just get the dregs of society, too. Well, the audit comes less than a month after the arrest of Alameda County Sheriff's Deputy Devin Williams Jr., who is in custody on suspicion of murder and the execution-style slings of a couple. Kelly said during a September 7 news news conference that Williams, age 24, had passed all of his psychological evaluations and background checks and had an immaculate record with the department. Hope Yen of the Associated Press by way of the Los Angeles Times brings us this next offering here in the Bistro Cafe of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy, Smothered Benedict Wednesdays. Attention potential car buyers, new electric vehicle charging stations are on their way to highway locations near you. All 50 states received final approval yesterday, Tuesday, to begin construction on a nationwide network of EV charging stations that places one roughly every 50 miles along interstate highways, part of the Biden administration's plan to spur widespread adoption of zero-emission cars. The Transportation Department said it had approved EV charger plans from a final set of 17 states, triggering the release of $1.5 billion in federal funds to all jurisdictions nationwide, $5 billion over five years, to install or upgrade chargers along 75,000 miles of highway coast-to-coast, with a goal of 500,000 EV chargers nationwide. Plans for the other states and the District of Columbia were approved earlier this month. By year's end, drivers could start seeing expansions and upgrades to existing highway EV stations in states such as California, Colorado, Florida, and Pennsylvania that now feature at least four fast charger ports, which enable EVs to fully recharge in about an hour. Construction of the new EV charging locations could begin by next spring. of the Associated Press brings us this final offering here in the Bistro Cafe part of West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. For the first time in a decade, Americans will pay less next year on monthly premiums for Medicare's 
Part B plan, which covers routine doctor's visits and other outpatient care. The rare 3% decrease in monthly premiums is likely to be coupled with a historically high cost of living increase in Social Security benefits, perhaps 9 or 10%, putting hundreds of dollars directly into, into the pockets of millions of people. It's something that we may never see again in the rest of our lives, said Mary Johnson, the Social Security and Medicare Policy Analyst for the Senior Citizens League. That can really be used to pay off credit cards to restock pantries that have gotten low because people cannot afford to buy as much as they did a year ago and do some long postponed repairs to homes and cars. The 2023 decrease in monthly Medicare premiums comes after millions of beneficiaries endured a tough year of high inflation and a dramatic increase in premiums this year. Most people on Medicare will pay $164.90 a month for Part B, starting next year, a savings of about $5.20. All right, let us now get to our break. And when we get back from that break, we will go through weather from around the world. And we will finish up with the stories that we have curated for you today. You are listening to West Coast Cookbook and Speakeasy. And we will be right back. You are listening to NetworksRadio.com. Please hang up and try again. From a point at sea to the circles of your mind, a new force is at work for planetary transformation. New radio for a new earth. 